Welcome to another Duplicate Replacer app video for Autodesk Inventor. I'm delighted to be telling you about four new features in the app, all user requests. Let's take a look. Firstly, grouping by eye properties. What do we mean here? Well, the app's always done a scan of assemblies in Inventor and given you groups of duplicate parts which have the same shape, the same geometry. But not all parts that have the same shape or geometry should actually be considered the same parts. What about if they have different material, appearance assigned, different standard or custom eye properties, maybe a finish eye property or something like that. That would all dictate that these parts should maybe be considered different parts downstream in your manufacturing operations. We can now add one or more of these things, material, appearance, properties, as a criteria in our table showing us our groups of duplicate parts and see the values that are assigned to the parts and split the groups out into subgroups based on those values. Okay, secondly, a super simple tool for showing you which groups of duplicate parts are completely unedited, which are those that are work in progress, and which of those groups are completed, i.e. you've done all the replacements that you want to do and there's only a single part file represented in those groups. So it's very handy if you want to do replacement of duplicate parts in, in phases, maybe you want to save the model and come back to it, that kind of thing. Thirdly, we've got the ability to export all of your duplicate part data to Excel. That would include any extra columns that you've added for eye properties, material appearance, it would include the file names of all the duplicate parts that have been found. You can now export a partial or complete set of data for all of those parts to Excel. And fourthly, just a minor uh, improvement to the Create Arrangement tool, which allows you to lay out rows and columns uh, of all the groups of duplicate parts in a new inventor assembly. You can now demote uh, the parts for each group of duplicate parts into a sub-assembly inside an assembly, just for easier management. I'll show you all of these tools now. We're looking at a model in Inventor 2023 here, but the app works with all versions of Inventor 2018 and newer. Let's just take a look at the bill of materials for this assembly before the duplicate replacer app gets to work. So if I look at the parts only, bill of materials for clarity here, what we can see is that we only have one instance here for each part in this assembly. You can see all of those quantities are one. This is of course because this assembly has been produced using the multi-solid body modeling method. So we are expecting lots of duplicates here. Uh, it's a good candidate for the app. So let's hit done and let's run a scan for duplicates using the app. Uh, we can check for duplicates here with scan assembly in the inspect tab or we can hit this button on the quick access toolbar. So let's just hit that now. The scan should take about 10 seconds to run. We've got about 170 um, part files in this assembly. Okay, that's the scan complete. We can see that there is actually 27 groups of duplicate parts that have been identified in this assembly. We can see the quantities of files contained in each one of those groups, and we can actually highlight them by just clicking on them here, and we'll see them highlighted in the window. It's worth mentioning at this point, uh, if you haven't watched the introduction video for the Duplicate Replacer app, just Google Duplicate Replacer app for Autodesk Inventor. It's probably worth watching that video, which will show you the general functions of how the app works rather than these four updates we're talking about today. That video will show you things like right clicking, selecting all the rows and how you can actually replace all the parts with a right click replace parts or replace all the part number I properties for bomb merging of these rows by right clicking here and replacing those. So I'm just going to sort these groups of duplicate parts by which have got the most number of files in them, put the, the highest at the top, and I'm also gonna to switch to a, a wireframe view, I think, so that I can see uh, these parts when they're highlighted, okay. So if we were to right click here and replace the parts for this one group, for these draw sides here, we would replace 23 of these parts with the first of the 24 parts. And then we'd have 24 occurrences, 24 instances of a single part file representing these uh, 24 draw sides. But 
Let's take a look at the material of each of these parts by isolating them first. So I'm going to use this button here to isolate these parts. Let's just zoom in a bit. Uh, and I'll just change my uh, component selection by using shift and right mouse button to part priority here and then click off and then click on a few of these parts and take a look. So this part's got a material of wood birch. This one here has got a material of MDF medium. Okay, and it looks like they're combinations of those. So wood birch and MDF medium. So it may be that you want to still consider these parts the same parts, but in this case, the material is extremely important to me and I want to split this group by material. How do I go about doing that? Well, we can add as many extra criteria to this group as we like with this button here. If I click on this, we get the standard eye properties in there by default. I'll show you how to do uh, some custom eye properties in a moment. But let's just pick material, see we can toggle these on and off and then just click off of the, uh, the list here. And what we get is another column in the table populated with the material for the parts in each of these groups. But importantly, we see now that instead of having 27 groups of duplicates that we had at the start, we've now got 41. That's because many of these groups contained parts with different materials, so they had to be split out. Let's find the groups relating to these parts we've isolated here by using this handy tool for finding in the table. So let's click this one and then if we pick uh, this one here, I think was birch, wasn't it? So if we pick that one, okay, so that's group number seven and then let's use this tool again and then let's pick one of these ones, which I think was MDF and that's group number six. Okay, so that's been highlighted. So group number six and seven See, before we had 24 files, we've now got 16 in one group and eight in the other. 16 with MDF and eight with Birch. So just to repeat, uh, if I was to select these two groups and right click replace parts here, what we'll get is 15 of the part files in this group being replaced with the 16th part file and seven of them in this group being replaced with the eighth one. And uh, as you will have seen in the first video that I mentioned before, you can change the part that is the kind of the source part that does the replacing of the other parts. You can change that using this selector here. Okay, so that was splitting the groups by uh, the material property. What about if we wanted to click here and add some other properties to split the groups by? If we tick appearance as well, see we've now got material ticked and appearance ticked. If we click off of there, we don't have to rerun the scan. It will just show us a different display of the data, but this time with an appearance column as well. If I just hit refresh here, what you'll see is we're still only seeing 41 groups. So adding appearance as a criteria for the groups hasn't increased the groups any more than adding material, which means we must have the same appearance already applied in each one of these 41 groups. Okay, so you can tick as many uh, properties here as you want. If you want to clear these extra criteria that we're using, you can just right click here and say clear all. Then if I click off, my columns will be reset back to the original columns. So those are standard properties. What about if we want to use custom eye properties? Well, I know that we have got some custom properties uh, called uh, a custom eye property called finish on these parts, or at least most of them. So let's just uh, unisolate these parts here and let's try splitting again here. So what I need to do is to click this little selector here and then pick any part which has the custom eye property I'm looking for or eye properties that I'm looking for. So if I click this one here, now what we see is some of the items in the list like finish here, L1, L2, L3 are custom eye properties with this different icon. So I can select that one and any other ones that I want and click off of here and I'll get a column for that custom eye property as well and including the value uh, that is assigned to each of the parts in these groups of duplicates. So we can see here, there is a part here which doesn't have a custom eye property called finish on it. We get this does not exist. And what's also interesting to note is that uh, there's quite a lot of the groups of duplicates now which have a finish flag on them here. Let's just refresh this and take a look at how many groups we've got. See, we've actually got 48 groups of duplicate parts, more than when we split just by material. So we've got quite a few different values of this finish property. And if we look at the ones 
which have a different icon on them down here, they all have a file quantity of one. So the app's basically telling us you're done with this group of duplicate parts because there's only one file in it. So there's no replacement that needs to be done. That only is required if you have more than one file. Okay, of course, if we turn off the uh, splitting by finish, then these rows are no longer considered completed with the finished uh, flag on them because the file quantities are more than one in every case. But let's just uh, split by finish property again. And then I can show you something else useful here as well. And another new feature in the app, which I mentioned, is the ability to filter which rows you're actually looking at. This is useful if you plan on doing a kind of partial replacements or doing the replacement of the parts or the eye properties in several stages, maybe not all in one go, and you want to see your kind of work in progress, then what I can do is to turn off the display, just hide all of these rows where there's nothing more to be done. So I can toggle that on and off here. You see now I'm showing 26 of 48 groups. If I toggle this back on, I'm now showing all 48 groups. Okay, so you can just toggle these on and off. If I do that, I'm now showing zero of the groups because these are the only ones I've got left. Okay, let's just take a look at a replacement operation itself. It seems a shame to uh, come this far and not actually replace any parts. So I'm going to turn off finish there. I'm going to turn on material again and click off of here. So I've got 41 groups of parts to replace here although some of them do not need replacing at all. So I'm going to select all these parts, select all rows, right click select all rows, and I will just hit replace parts here. So it's going to give me a summary of how many components are going to be replaced here. And I'll say yes, that's fine. And then if you've watched the first video, once this is done, it gives us the ability to accept or discard the, um, the replacement parts that have just been added to the assembly. You see the assembly doesn't look any different here. That's because 108 extra parts have been added or extra instances of the replacement parts have been added. So if I take a look in here, take a look down the bottom for instance, you can see we've got a lot of proposed replacement parts here which the app is saying these this is taking one part and replacing other parts in the group with it as a replacement. And if you're happy with all these proposed replacements, as you hopefully have seen in the first video, you can just right click and accept the replacement parts. And then that will go ahead and delete the original parts which are being replaced. And I've now got a much more streamlined assembly here because I have 108 fewer parts in this assembly than I did before. You can see the finish flag icon for each of these groups. You can see that each of these groups now actually only has a file quantity of one despite the fact that if we click on them, that yes, it's only got one file in each group, but it's got multiple instances, multiple occurrences of each file in the group. They've just been, it's just been placed multiple times. Okay, so you can see all those. You would see in the, uh, the first video as well, you can take a more detailed look at what's contained in each of these groups just by uh, hitting this plus icon here and you can see the contents, I can see the occurrence, I can see the name of the file, I can open the file from here, uh, and so on and so forth. Let's take a quick look at the bill of materials if we close out of this, out of the duplicate replacer here, now that we're done with it. Let's open up the bill of materials, switch back to a normal view as well. And we're expecting not to see quantities of one throughout here now because we are reusing our part files uh, multiple times, multiple instances of them rather than multiple matching part files, which is the, the, the waste that we want to avoid. So there we go. We've got lots of quantities. Our bill of materials is going to look way, way more sensible now. And we've got a much more streamlined assembly for downstream use. Let's have a look at running a duplicate scan on this uh, fabricated frame assembly that we've got here. I'll just hit scan here. We've actually got, if we take a look in the bottom right, we've got um, 520 or so unique part files in this assembly. This assembly um, has actually been imported from a step file, which is a, a very 
uh, useful function of the app in that you may be receiving sort of structural or frame uh, third-party CAD formats from a program like Tecla and similar and that will often give you uh, lots of duplicates which are actually geometrically the same parts and managing potentially thousands of downstream part files that you don't need to manage can be quite wasteful so the app is very useful to streamline those assemblies we'll take a look at how many of these uh, part files are actually duplicates in a moment when the app's finished okay so scans all done uh, if i hit refresh here we'll see that we've actually got 168 groups of duplicate parts in this assembly let's order by the number of files in each group let's just make this a bit bigger here so we can see if I click on these, you can see which parts have actually been identified as duplicates. And it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to identify these as duplicates without the app to do it. For instance, this group here, these uh, duplicates, wouldn't be possible really to say that those are duplicate part files without the app helping us out with that. Um, so just out of interest, if I was to select all the rows here and if I was to do a replace parts there, right click and replace parts, uh, it's going to do a quick scan and it's, um, it would be able to replace 411 of the 520 or so part files in this, in this assembly. So we'd be drastically reducing the size of the assembly, making it much faster to work with inventor's job's going to be much much easier and also less part files to manage downstream um, but in this case we're not going to replace those i just wanted to show you the ability to export the arrangement of these duplicates in a new way and also the export to excel let's right click here and if i say uh, create arrangement here the new option that we've got now is to place components in sub assemblies so if i turn that one off you still got the old option to place components in browser folders but if i turn this one on and hit save well so we've selected all of the groups of duplicate parts we could have only done this with half of them or one or two of them for instance but if we hit save now it's going to go and create us a, a new assembly uh, which is a normal inventor assembly but it's got all these groups of duplicate parts sort of laid out in rows and columns for us to take a look at so as we said in in the first introduction video this is really it's really a tool to help build your confidence this is a really easy way to take a look at what the app has decided are duplicate parts and it'll list them all out for you here and you can take a look and say yes i'm happy that these are all duplicate parts so for instance this first row here of duplicate parts they've been put into a sub assembly called group 112 and we can go and open that assembly we can take a look at the parts it contains and double check that we're happy that they are in fact duplicates before we go and do any other operations of course you can save this assembly off and do whatever you like with it it's a normal inventor assembly but that's the the new function there to group all of the parts within within each group uh, in sub assemblies there so you can see these are different part files here and so if i right click on shift right click and choose the i properties for this part here the part number ends in 389 and if i click on this one here and look at the i properties of that part number ends in 796 so they're different part files on the system okay so we can close this temporary assembly here and we don't need to save changes to it and we can just do the other option create an arrangement but this time put the components in browser folders and if i save that we'll see the same uh, arrangement of parts but this time the parts are all in the top level assembly okay so here we go group 112 is just a browser folder here that's got all of those parts contained within it okay so let's close that now let's take a quick look at the export to excel function so super easy select as many rows uh, of groups of duplicate parts as you want in the table I'm going to select them all um, and then when they're selected 
you can right click and export the data for those selected rows only to Excel. So if I do that, it's going to take a moment to spit that data out and then it's going to open up Excel. If you've got Excel on your machine, uh, it exports a CSV file which can be opened in Excel. And here we go. I've got all the data for uh, all of those parts directly in, in Excel. So for group 112, for instance, I can see um, all of the uh, we've got looks like sort of 18 parts here all the file names all the volumes um, which one's the source part for the replacement all that kind of thing what's uh, important to note here as well oh, here's all the other groups of duplicate parts so you see we've got 168 groups of duplicates uh, what's important here to note as well is that if you do add extra data to the table here um, using the uh, the extra uh, I properties criteria that data will be included as well so uh, if I um, add, add in for instance appearance and material let's add those in so we've got the extra data here um, if I now select all of these rows and these two extra columns for appearance and material will also be included so right click export data to Excel let's just uh, resize these columns and so you can see the extra data there also included okay I hope you find this video really useful thanks for checking it out have a great day